self-shooting director job for Nescafe. Self-shooting? Why? Because budget? Is that why the production company thought of me? Probably. A lot of the branded content and commercial jobs that have come my way this year had me thinking that I may well have dug myself a small grave. A small grave shaped like a small budget. I imagine the meetings behind closed doors before I'm involved go something along the lines of this. Oh, we can't afford to make this one sexy. I know someone who will go above and beyond and really try and make it sexy in order to prove themselves, thinking that when it comes to it, we'll give them the bigger budget and they can really show us what they can do. But let's definitely forget about him when the big budgets do actually come in, though, because he probably can't handle those ones. Yeah, we'll just keep sending him the small fry stuff and he'll make it work. I'm being super cynical. I'm grateful for the work. I truly am. And I really enjoyed this job in particular. But it's been a while since I've worked on a job with a decent budget, like a six figure budget. I'm ready for the next big one, Production Gods. Give it to me. I got the job because of an existing relationship with a production company I've worked with a whole bunch before. They asked me if I could send through a bit of a portfolio of branded content work that I've done with real people, as opposed to actors, models and musicians who are just a figment of our imagination. Once I got the green light from the agency and client, it was a last minute jaunt on the train up to Cumbria in the north of England to visit the two farms we'd be shooting on, scout out prospective locations, meet the farmers and ask lots of questions. This wasn't just a tech recce, but one where the creators and client were actually trying to nail down exactly what it was they wanted out of this job. The key message was basically to show that Nescafe are doing some great things with the dairy farmers they work with here in the UK. But this had to be communicated in no more than 60 seconds. Those weren't exactly the words that were said, but that's the gist that I took from it. And for full transparency, I've got to say that Nescafe, their organisations and the farmers that we were working with, really are doing great things. As with a lot of these types of big brand content jobs, I had the opportunity to learn a lot on the farm. The cows truly are having a lovely time and the farmers have to work very hard and jump over a lot of bureaucratic hurdles to make sure they do, all whilst trying to ensure a healthy and sustainable farm for generations to come. I don't want to sound too much like a brand ambassador here, but I just thought it warranted saying. Where do you want my hands, Scott? Um, Anyway, like plenty of organised professional adult projects of this nature that have come before, it wasn't entirely, but almost mostly, let's just shoot a bunch of questions and see what we get. We'll find the story in the edit, which I don't love. I really do like a plan. Both the producer and myself were really pushing to narrow things down the best we could ahead of going back up to shoot a couple of weeks following the recce. Shooting on something as visually captivating, at least in my eyes, as a farm, is exciting to me. So I poured over a bunch of references looking for some visual cues and inspiration as the surrounding B-roll that we would capture on the farm would really be what brought this to life in the edit. I actually went as far as to rip tons of shots I loved from other people's work and look to see where I might be able to incorporate these sorts of stylistic moments in our shoot. I knew that time, kit and crew would all act as limitations, but I felt better going into this with some planned visual targets at least. On the cinematography side of things, I'd be looking for opportunities for foreground stuff where possible to add depth. Camera movement, motivated by an action. Textures, point of view rigging. And as with all great shoots outside anywhere ever, trying to utilise the time of day and squeeze as much out of golden hour as possible. Before the shoot, there were many emails, one phone call, two meetings via Zoom, and plenty of in-person chat on our two-day recce. I put together my ideal shooting schedule ahead of the shoot based on having the ideal scenario of weather to shoot in, but had also scouted a number of spots to work in if the weather wasn't going to play ball on the day. But for this to be all it could be visually, the weather really needed to be on our side for this to work, as we didn't have full back days to shoot on should it not be. One thing that I did think about ahead of time is the wardrobe. A lot of these references that I've cited would have had costume department, but we didn't have budget for any of that. So having met the farmers just wearing plain all black tracksuits, I politely asked if they had anything with a bit more character, something that would pop against the greens that we were going to be around. I think Richard and Steve nailed the brief most of all, but if you look closely, you can quite clearly see here some red camera tape covering up the logo on this particular jacket. Anyway, yeah, wardrobe, worth thinking about, even if you haven't got budget. On the shoot, in terms of crew, it was just producer Will, camera, grip, and lighting hero assistant Nathan, and myself. There were two clients, an agency producer, two creatives from the agency, and a driver for carting them around the farms whilst Nathan travelled with me and the kit in my new sexy but reliable. Fortunately, by this time we went into the interviews knowing a bit more about what they wanted out of them, which massively helped us keep the actual on-camera time as concise as possible and not eat into our B-roll shooting hours. It would have been real nice to have shot the interviews gone away, made our selects, done a bit of an edit, and then come back to shoot more relevant B-roll. As working the way that we did, I just had to make the best of what I'd shot work to the edit in post, rather than having much of a specific structured plan. Despite the 4 and 5 a.m. alarm clocks on both days, the weather didn't do what it needed to do. 
in terms of lighting. So we just had to soldier on regardless. Fortunately, it never pissed it down. But what it did mean is that when I saw a last minute opportunity in the forecast for some nice light, when I should have been en route home at the end of the second day, I made the decision to stay behind and make the most of the light that I've been hoping for. Getting those golden hour moments with a few of the cows, some beautiful nature, and one of the farmers that I managed to convince to come and meet me on the hill at 9 p.m. at night for a couple of shots. In the scheme of what ended up making it in the final edit though, I'd say it was totally worth it. I was on a buyout to take on the edit too, as well as shoot and direct. It was a weird one because even after wrapping, the creatives and client didn't know exactly what they were after. So I had to just make my best judgement from the material we'd shot. And a few Zoom calls to discuss and semi-excessive 12 versions later, we ended up with an edit that everyone was happy with. The final edit from the first basically contained 95% of the same material but in a different order and to a different music track. It just took some time to make sense of what was the best order to tell this in. Brutally, for my own real purposes though, they'd run out of post budget by the time it came to the grade. So it was uploaded to the interwebs with just a basic ARRI REC 709 LUT thrown over the top of it, which I'm sure for those of you watching that have had the same experience would know is a little bit heartbreaking. So in more recent months, in order for me to have a job worthy of my portfolio, I made a few alterations to the edit you've seen here, paid out of my own pocket for an outrageously cheap favor grade from Cam at DMC, courtesy of their lovely post producer, Susie. Thanks, Susie. I was paid 5,000 pounds for my time on this as a self-shooting director. This would have been billed as two days at two and a half thousand pounds a day. But as we all know, it was much more than just the two shoot days. The meetings, recce days, and brain power time outside of this are all included in that fee. I received a further £2,650 for the edit time. I also managed to make an additional £840.80 pence off of my heavily discounted camera, lighting and grip equipment that was on the job, and a further yet £180 for the use of Vanya Radcliffe, name still pending. So a pretty good payday. I don't think there's too much more to talk about on this one. I would have loved a whole week on the farm of premium weather scenarios, more structure from the creatives going in more budget for additional crew, grip and lighting toys to be available, but I really think we did the best we could with what we had. Watch this video next for another corker of a branded content gig, and make sure to subscribe for more semi-helpful tips and interesting insider industry knowledge.